Hey, Kevin here, top 100 financial advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller, and we are here to talk about the stock market. On the 16th of September, you are going to hear about a stock that is going to, at least in my view, rule the airwaves, at least for the next few months, definitely until the end of the year. It is going to be a very crazy ride. And is a new company. It's called Snowflake. They are offering their IPO under the stock symbol Snow, S-N-O-W. It's a tech company, which tech always has a buzz. And I want to let you know why for the first time, one of the first times, I'm actually considering an IPO. You guys know for me, I usually sit out of IPOs. I let them ride out and then I decide once I get five, 10 years of history, then I decide to invest in it. But this one is different. Not saying I'm going to invest in it, but this one is different. And I want to give you some context about what it is, what they do, and why I'm kind of side eyeing this and looking at it perhaps in a different way. But first, make sure you go to buildingbread.com slash free. This brings you to my email list. Everybody loves my emails. Um, so you want to make sure that you're on the list. We talk about stuff like this and other things that may be going on, going on and around in the market. So you want to make sure that you are abreast of all the news. Obviously, you are here on the live stream, which is always great. Whether you are Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, make sure that you hit the share button right now. Um, go ahead and hit, hit the share button now because I'm telling you, on the 16th, the 17th, the 18th, and the days and weeks following, people are going to be asking about this company. So I am out in front of it now. I'm letting you know right now. This is what you need to know about the Snow IPO. All right, so first off, it is a cloud computing company. Basically, companies want to store their data and figure out what's going on and have analytics and insights and basically understand what they're doing and have it in a place where they can access it anywhere. That's basically what the cloud is. The good thing about Snow is, or you can say good or bad, they are competing against Amazon and AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft. Microsoft has, a, I think it's called the Azure platform or something like that. Anyway, these are the two biggest competitors. Amazon, I think, is winning in this particular space. The fact that Snow has at least gotten this far is a good thing, but you got some really big established players here. So good news is, you know, they're competing on a high level. Bad news is, them the wrong people to be competing with, <laughs> but you are there. So that's good. Um, other good thing is they've been they've had triple digit growth for the last few years before they were public. So they've been growing for quite some time. Um, I'm going to show you uh, their filing document. You'll see that, I mean, financially, they're relatively solid. Now, they are not profitable. They are still losing. If I remember correctly, they were losing, I think, 170-something billion a year or million, we'll, we'll, look, we'll see exactly what their losses are. But they, um, they have been losing money, but th that gap is slowly narrowing. This is regular for new companies, um, new young companies. You start to lose money in those first few years, then you become profitable. Amazon was like this for several years. Tesla was like this up, up until last year when they had their first full year of profitability. So it does happen with newer companies. Tesla, as you know, went public in 2010. So they've only been out for 10 years. I don't know what their history was prior to that. Um, good news again, it's, it's tech. Tech always is going to have some buzz, but you need to know that not all tech companies, just because it's a tech IPO, just because it's popular, does not mean that the IPO is going to go straight up or that things are going to go well. We have examples just as recently as last year and going back even to 2015, where, where some companies did well coming out of their IPO and some did not. And we talked about them before. Um, Slack, terrible. Slack came out last year. It was a tech company. They were out to replace email. They were like the, the chatting office platform thing. I, I mean, I use it. I don't know why people love it. It's, it's decent. But that aside, Slack was very popular. People did use it. They had an IPO, it has not done well. And if I remember correctly, I think yesterday or the day after, they dropped like 10 or 15%. Twitter, great company, I like Twitter. It's been trash since it's come out several years ago. Snapchat, same boat. Pinterest, not all that great. Even though Pinterest shot up the first few weeks and then fell off. But on the opposite side of that, Zoom has been incredible. So will, will Snow be more of a Zoom or more of a Slack? We don't know. 
We don't actually know. Now, I believe, but we don't have evidence yet, I believe it's going to be closer to the Zoom category because it's more necessary, especially in the age of the pandemic. Companies are moving towards the cloud. So if you're a cloud-based company, you're probably going to do well. Zoom is, I wouldn't call it cloud-based, but it's video conferencing, which is helpful, and it was helpful beforehand. And Zoom was profitable before they went public, so that helped them as well. Um, I wouldn't consider, I, you know how I am, I don't consider Tesla tech, but they did well after their IPO. But as an asterisk for Tesla, because as we know, and I've showed you guys before, Tesla really didn't hit where it is now up until like 2018, eight years eight years after the IPO. So even if you decide to do any IPO, but especially if you decide to do snow, it might go up that first day, it might go up that first month, it may do nothing for years before it starts to take off. You never know. So just throw it out there, we will see where it goes. But I wanna discuss the risk and then discuss what I think is the most exciting news and the news that at least makes me look twice because normally I'm like, IPO, whatever, catch me, catch me when you're profitable, Catch me when, you know, when y'all are all right, when things aren't, aren't crazy, and then I'll decide to invest. But this one caught my eye. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, the world's most famous investor, is investing or has invested rather um, in this company. He does not do technology for the most part, and he really doesn't do IPOs. I think he's only done like one IPO in his entire 90-year-old life. So it is a big deal that he is doing this. Now, some of us like or don't like Warren Buffett because he's been, some people say he's, he's lost his magic over the last few years. And I can understand that. For example, um, I forgot what he bought. He bought, I think he bought airlines and then sold them. And it wasn't like, you know, why would you buy airlines? We knew, and we talked about this, airlines hadn't been great for a very long time. Why would you buy them now? Um, we do know good things, I guess. He got rid of oil. I think it was... Um, Philip 66 that he got rid of because of the coronavirus. He got rid of a lot of those banks, which I've been telling y'all and I was on the money. I'm telling y'all to get out of that. So, you know, he might be on to something here. One of his biggest regrets, as he had mentioned, is not catching on to Amazon earlier, not catching on to Apple until earlier. I don't think, I think he got into Apple in 2016, which is late. Apple has been around for a mighty long time. And when it comes to the stock market, I mean, they've been good I think 2010 and probably even beyond then. So he had plenty of time to, to choose Apple. Apple's one of his big, biggest holdings now, but like, bruh, where you been um, in terms of investing in Apple? So, you know, he's not perfect, but the fact that he is putting up, I think, 570 million into the company does catch my eye. Also, Salesforce is another big holder of the company. I think it's in this article... Yep, Salesforce. So they have a, a value ventures arm. So Salesforce also invests in other companies, which is smart on them. Salesforce, as we know, just made the Dow. So they're, you know, they're fancy now. Um, so Salesforce in, invested in them. They bought or, you know, buying $250 million in a private placement. So like they they get to the, the special investors line. Me and you, us regular folk, we have to wait until September 16th to jump in if you want to jump in. Um, so these, these are two big names. If you have a Warren Buffett and you have a Salesforce and we know Salesforce has been successful buying into the company, that tells me that they know a lot about it and if they are confident enough to put their money into it, then maybe I can put my little $25 in it or, or whatever. Um, but the good news is they are more solid investors. They have more access to information than we do. And the fact that they are in it and they have had past success, then it might be something worth changing my own stubborn rules for. We will see. Um, additionally, here's what you need to know. They, all companies have risks. So this is their S1. Every company has to file this with the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. And you have to list all the things you are worried about, which is what I like, because I'd like to figure out like, you know, what, what's on your mind? What are your risks? In my mind, I have a list of things that I am concerned about with every company, but especially with new companies. They right here will flat out tell you. All you have to do, if you want to Google this entire document, it is long, it is boring. No, I have not read all 200 and something pages, but I went to the most important parts. Um, and we're not going to read it all here today, clearly. But what are they uh, concerned about? We have limited operating history, which makes it difficult to forecast our future results or of operations, which means they are young. They have not been around for a long time, which is why I don't invest in IPOs for the most part. They don't know because they haven't done it long enough. So 
that is their biggest risk is the first thing that they that they listed. We may not have visibility into our financial position, which means they don't know what's going to happen financially for them, which makes it harder to forecast. They like, you know, um, I think it was, was it Amazon? No, not Amazon. I'm sorry. Uh, Netflix said, look, we got X amount of subscribers this quarter. We don't expect the same amount next quarter because we assume that things are going to get better. So they're able to forecast. But Netflix has been around for a while. They're relatively accurate with that. Snowflake hasn't been around that long. So they actually don't know or they may not know is what they're saying. So do be aware of that. They have a history of operating losses and may not achieve or sustain profitability in the future. They have been losing money. Flat out, they have been losing money. They are concerned, which they should be, um, that if they continue that trend of continuously losing money, you are going to run out of money at some point in time. Now, we'll tell you, every single company does have risk. Every single company. I remember when I owned, I still think I own this one, um, Coca-Cola, they said that these health trends may not help them out and that people are taking vending machines out of schools and people were becoming more health conscious. They're not drinking soda or like I call, like to call it pop. Um, people aren't drinking pop as much. So this could be a risk to us. Every company has a risk. Um, but these are the ones that, that come out um, flat out and say it. Um, here they go. So 700 and I said it's billion. So my mistake. 778 million is what they lost. Um, and 348 million ended in 2019. And 177.2 177, um, million um so yeah so you have all those losses here accumulated deficit of 700 million so these are these are big numbers these are it's not great i'm not going to tell you that a company losing money is, is great infamously famously however you want to say that um uber uber especially lost billions of dollars and also they are considered tech which i don't necessarily do but they have lost billions per quarter so they're not as bad as uber in terms of losses but the stock, you know, Uber really just, just fell off the map for obvious reasons, coronavirus being a part of that, but they were falling off beforehand. So the, the concern about these types of companies, about these new companies, is you never know. It can go either way. If you remember around this time last year, Uber and Lyft were huge. They were the biggest things. Everybody wanted it. And even so, after it took off the first few days, it just fell off the map. So it's very, very risky if you decide to do an IPO. Warren Buffett got the money. He got a hundred and some odd, more than a hundred billion, I think it's $140 billion that he's got laying around that he has to spend. So could this be him being bored and saying, look, I don't have enough tech. Let me go ahead and jump into something. Maybe. Um, Salesforce, I don't know what their track record is. Other, I know as a company, we know they're good, but from their venture arm, I don't know how, how well they do. Um, but I do know from, you know, contextual, contextually, we know that a lot of people do use Snowflake and that they are growing. They, I think, like close to tripled or quadrupled their revenue over between the list this year and last year, which is great. That is not sustainable forever, though, but that is good news. Um, so we're, I will be tracking this company. I don't know if, if I'm going to put my own money into it because... You never know how this stuff is going to go. But I am here to tell you that it is going to be hot. You are going to hear a lot of stuff on it. We will likely cover it. And you need to make up in your mind, is this something that you want to do? And if you do, how are you going to play the situation? Regardless of what I do, I'm still going to, if I were to invest in it, I'm still going to adhere to that 5% rule. So if I've got $100,000, I'm not going to put in more than 5000 Because if this falls off the map like Uber... I'm not going to get killed by it. If it shoots up like Zoom, then great. My $5,000 is now $10,000. Great. It doubled. Uh, but I'm not going to bet the farm and hope that this company is the next big thing. But also, if you do get into it, timing is an issue. That's something that you have to think about. It's one of the only times that timing really matters. Because an IPO, and we, we talked about it with Beyond Me, and perhaps I can pull up a chart here in a second, those first few months, might take off like a rock, rocket ship and boom, you're good. And it could fall right back after that. Um, it, or it could be like a Facebook, also in technology, where it was god awful. I mean, just absolutely terrible that first year. And now it's, you know, one of the top five or 10 companies out there in terms of investments. So it, it is a, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's roll of the dice, blackjack, 
whatever you want to call it. But because it is tech-based and it's cloud-based, I am inclined to believe that it is, I'm not going to call it the next Amazon or anything like that, but I think it is closer to a Salesforce, closer to a Zoom than it is a Slack or an Uber. So that's, that's my view on it based on what we know right now. Um, but whatever you decide to do, know that it's going to be hot. It is going to be popular. It's also still losing money. And it may be losing money for the next several years. But also, Amazon did this too. Tesla did this for quite a while too. Um, so as we wrap up, because I know I'm talking long now and I know it's a Friday, I do want to, uh oh, what just happened? <laughs> um, I do want to show you a few charts to kind of compare and let you guys know what's going on. So let me... Try this real quick. All right, so this is a quick what you need to know, which we already talked about. All right, finance. We all, we love Yahoo Finance out here. All right, so I just wanna just, again, give you a picture of what this stuff could look like. Um, we need to talk about Nikolai too. We'll, we'll get to that at some point. Um, but let's, let's shoot for Facebook first. We all know Facebook. A lot of y'all know me from Facebook, so let's uh, let's start there. But just to give you a realistic picture, because everybody always says, well, what if you had invested in Facebook at the beginning? What if you invested in Amazon at the beginning? That's all well and fine, but you have to also realize that in the beginning, it might not have been pretty. In the beginning, it might not have worked well for you. Um, so you got to, if, if you can tell the future, that'd be great. Um, but you have to be able to, to, to sit tight for what could be years sometimes um or or not sit there at all or wait there's a whole bunch of options you can do um so i'm gonna hit, go ahead and hit max i think they went public in 2012 if i remember correctly and let me get rid of these it's home depot and procter and gamble from the other day Let's see if it's gonna let me get rid of these there we go All right, so let's zoom in. And as you see, like Facebook took off. It didn't take off that first day, right? So right here, April of, was this 2012? As you can see, that first year, it was not good. They started up off up here uh, in, was it April, May? By August, the first three months, they were down 52%. So it could just start off great or it could start off terribly. Some of us may say, look, I'm just going to wait three months, which some say that IPOs do tend to drop off those th that three months and you might want to pick it up then. It's after what they call a lockup period. So people like Warren Buffett and others who got in early have to hold it for like 90 days usually. And then once they got their 90 days, a lot of them bounce. So, you know, it could be that. I don't know. Um, but anyway... You know, Facebook fell 50 some odd percent. And then ever since then, it's pretty much been uphill, <laughs> as you can see from there. So like, you know, are you willing to, if this were you, are you willing to take that hit that first, you know, three, four, five months? Uh, yeah. If you, if you know this is going to happen, which you don't, and that's the, that's the kicker. You don't know if that's going to happen. You hope it is. Um, people who had Uber definitely thought this was going to be the case. And at least right now, and this could change, right? But a year, a year, it had, hadn't gone well. So let's see. So this is the max. It went all the way back to May and it is down, down 11%. So it's not as bad, but you know, those first few months in November of last year, you were down 35%. By May of this year, I'm sorry, March of this year, which coronavirus clearly, Hadn't, hadn't hurt, hadn't helped anyone. It was down 48%. We don't know where Uber is going to go after this. It could be the, the next big thing or, or not. I'm trending on not, but you never know. Um, this is Slack. And they, the funny thing is they have Uber technologies as well as Slack technologies, which Slack is technology, but you get the point. Um, you've got Slack. The Slack went public in June of 2019. And it just fell from the very beginning. You can see here, fell from the very beginning down to, from January down 44%. Then it came up a bit and fell back down. And right now within this first year and some change is down 30%. 
So it, it can go either way. It can go either way. You can wait for that first year if you think things are going to go well and pick it up when it's really dirt cheap. Or you can just stay out of it altogether. Or you can get in early and end up like Zoom where things just, just take off. So this is the, the risk of IPOs. Now, like I said, I am more hopeful. Um, that's, that's all you really got at this point. Uh, is just hope. Um, so I'm more hopeful because Warren Buffett, because of Salesforce, that they will be closer to a Zoom. But because you're close to a Zoom, doesn't mean you are in Zoom. That's that's at the end of the day, you don't know. Um, so we'll see. I will muddle on it and see what I want to do. If I if I do do it, um, you know I don't I don't do IPOs because I don't have enough history and information. Um, so I'll be doing that this weekend to see if we do it. But again, I'm, I'm still going to limit myself um, and protect myself the same way I did with Tesla. I didn't want to invest in Tesla because I don't like Elon Musk. But the stock was up. It did have some history. It's down now, which we knew that. Um, we knew from Apple that it could have gone down, but we'll see. But I also only got put this much in it. So, you know, it could fall off to the ground for all I care. Um, I got other stuff that's actually working for me. So we will see. We will see. Um, but I'm interested to see where, where it goes. Um, you know, if I get into it, I sure hope it, it does a Zoom, but there's no guarantee. So you want to be careful there. But I'm telling you now, it will be hot. Um, the amount of fervor and attention that you saw with the Apple split, the Tesla split, is probably what you're going to see with Snow next, which may be comforting or may not be comforting. I don't know. Um, so do pay attention to that. All right, that is it for me. Again, make sure you go to buildingbread.com slash free. That link will be above or below, depending on where you're watching. And make sure that you sign up for the email list. You will get an email from me probably on Monday or the day of uh, when this goes public talking about this, probably referencing this video. Um, so interesting, if you're watching it now, then you get an email to watch it again, just to remind yourself. Uh, but we will be covering it and talking about it and seeing where this company goes. All right, that's it for me. I will talk to you all later. Bye.